Now, you know, on, on health, uh, it was a very wide topic on the panel. So, one of the topics that did not get discussed was, was the one about, uh, about free medicines. And, um, you know, it's interesting that the Congress party in, in Rajasthan, which had proposed the law and had implemented it for a very short while, uh, did not get reelected. So, the simple idea that free everything gets you reelected was not, not the case. Right. Um, I don't know, have you ever seen an instance of free medicine anywhere else in the world or what the implications of that yeah. are? I mean, I don't even know in detail what exactly that means. Well, I think there's, there's two interesting aspects of it. There's the political aspect about using that as a incentive for voters in the election, but then there's also, I think, the, the healthcare and the public health aspects of offering free generics. My understanding is that the program would have provided free essential medicines to patients through government hospitals. Um, on its face, I think it's a great proposal because we know that there's a lot of challenges for patients in India accessing basic medicines for a variety of issues, whether it be um, cost, availability in pharmacies, um, and other such reasons. So I think on its face, it's a great proposal and a way to get access to medicines for patients who need them. The political aspects I thought were really interesting because people either saw through it as a ploy to buy votes or decided that it wasn't enough for them to vote for the, the current government. Um, so we'll see how that plays out in other states because I think a lot of other states are looking at implementing similar programs. Um, and I think the, the national government has also considered such a policy um, India-wide for government hospitals. Yeah, I think an important aspect has got to be the co-pay. I, I really think people's behavior changes if it's totally free. Right. And while, whereas if you have a very small element of a co-pay, then it, it engages them with whatever the service mm -hmm. is, even if it's a relatively small number. Yeah, absolutely. You know, five rupees, ten rupees. It just brings them to be co-owners of the proposal rather than mere freebies granted to nameless, faceless. I think that's a good point because you, you're kind of getting a, interesting incentives in a healthcare system. Of course, uh, some of the argument against that is if you have a chronic disease, and I know you have some views on non-communicable diseases, but if you have a chronic disease, then co-paying each time. Sort uh, of a disproportionate burden, burden for those on, patients. Yeah, for those patients. Yeah. Yeah. But on, on non-communicable diseases, uh, you know, what's what's the... What's, what's your take? Well, I think there's been an emerging set of data lately that I think has, is popping up everywhere that 50% of deaths in India are caused by chronic diseases and that somehow there's this emerging public health crisis that needs to be dealt with in India. And I think that's paired with the, the healthcare system challenges where the Indian healthcare system isn't necessarily built to deal with chronic diseases. Patients who need to be managed on a monthly basis and um, blood tests that need to be taken, blood pressure monitoring and things like that, that you shouldn't have to go to a hospital to have your care managed. Yeah, I mean, some of this was touched upon in the panel, but I think one possible solution is, at least in chronic care, for the introduction of traditional systems. Mm -hmm. So Ayurveda, for example, has had quite substantial success with things like arthritis, with uh, respiratory illness, mm -hmm. which actually I believe is, uh, is the second largest cause of disease and death in, in, in India after cardiac uh, mm -hmm. problems. Mm -hmm. But even hypertension itself is a sort of a lifestyle uh, disease rather than being a true sort of bug carried disease, if I could, if I could yeah. call it that. And, and I think there's the possibility that changes in lifestyle and the introduction of some traditional systems can can at least alleviate the extent of the problem that, that we have yeah. uh, in India. But there's no real discussion of, uh, of, of bringing that in, in on scale mm -hmm. at, at the moment. There's sporadic experiments here, there, and everywhere, right. but, but not any that, that are working to scale. Well, I think the, the debate about um, infectious diseases is still a big issue in India, and until that challenge is tackled, it's almost hard to pivot to such an immense challenge, I think, where there's infrastructure, delivery, and human resources challenges that need to be dealt with also. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I work in the, in the water sector on, on, on some issues, and if, if all these problems are not enough, we have new challenges coming up, for example, the entire Gangetic Belt has an arsenic in water problem. And, and that's carcinogenic, over time at least. 
And so that creates, you know, some people estimate almost 200,000 new cancers a year. So if, if the regular, you know, diseases that we understand are not enough, yeah. we're getting new sort of strange ones being added to the mix. And that's uh, a burden to the healthcare system, yeah. the public health system, the infrastructure Everything. system, yeah, just, environmental just water, yeah. system, yep. Paradoxically, one of the simple solutions to that problem is to, is to not go deep for water to surface water. Okay. And the more you go to surface water, of course, you, you open up the can of worms on biological, I mean, on bacteriological problems. Mm -hmm. But bacteriological problems are much more easily solvable than, say, carcinogenic or other, uh, other issues. So, uh, you know, lots of cross currents on the Indian healthcare, uh, healthcare scene. I think we're relatively early in beginning to tackle mm -hmm. on scale some of these, some of these issues. Um, and both governments and private sector. I mean, all I think we can say now is that the top 20% of India has uh, self-pay access to reasonable medical care. Right. But the remaining 80%, it's a real, uh, sometimes tragic uh, access to services, sometimes complete uh, non-availability of of, of services. So I, I think that was an interesting theme that came out of the discussion today was what's the right balance of the government and the private sector in providing and paying for health care in this country and the you know clearly there's a, a bunch at the top who are able to take care of themselves and otherwise seek health care and pay for insurance and medical services but there's also a band at the bottom who probably needs some sort of government intervention to help them, but then there's the, the band in the middle, I think, that is sort of the wild card and what the right mix is to service those individuals. I mean, I completely agree with you yeah. there. I think one of the mechanisms for potentially paying for people who can't afford medical services should not be to create a complete national health service, mm -hmm. which is a transfer in kind, but to create a service that then allows for cash to be transferred in a direct cash transfer system. Mm -hmm. So it's almost a conditional cash transfer. If you go for a, a dental checkup or a medical checkup each year, then 100 rupees will be transferred to your account. But you have to initially put up the 100 rupees to the service provider. So it's sort of like reimbursement to the so patient? It's almost like reimbursement. The advantage there is by not, pro the, the problem with subsidized service mm -hmm is it distorts the market for services. Okay. Right, so let's just take uh, kerosene, for example. Mm -hmm. If you subsidize kerosene, then the market for kerosene becomes, you know, one sort free market kerosene and the other artificial yeah. market. Yep. Whereas if everybody pays the same price for kerosene, and those that require kerosene get a direct transfer of the subsidy, then you don't distort the market. So, so I think we could try- So market price we, Yeah, I think yeah. you could try something like that. You also then have access to a much wider yeah. set of providers. Do you think that would work for both the low income and the middle band, or is that more a solution that might work for sort of the, maybe I the, think the India, bottom of the middle, if you will? India has now got biometric cards for a substantial part of India. Mm -hmm. And I think we would be really successful if we can push it down as low as we can then I think you have a winner in, mm -hmm. in, in a possible solution. Thank you. Thank it's you. Been great.